Hey guys, it's Jess and today we're going to be going through how you can create a super smooth edit using Adobe After Effects and the Twixter plugin. And we're also going to go through how you can get more control over the speed in your edits. Before we jump into that though, I've got my TikTok up on the screen, which is where I post the majority of my edits, as well as my Instagram reels. And every single photo that I post to Instagram has some form of anime reference drawn in by yours truly. If you have any ideas of what I should include next, you can pop it in the comments down below, but let's just jump into it. So. What's Twixter? It is a external plugin that you can download and install into your Adobe After Effects and it essentially fills in the frames between your frames, if that makes sense. Honestly, I'm not an expert, but essentially when you are taking a normal video on your phone, it's probably shooting at like 30 frames per second, depending on your settings. But when you do a slow motion video, it's usually shooting at like 60 or 120 frames per second. So that means it's taking more pictures in each second um, and that way when you slow it down it looks a lot smoother and it's capturing a lot more of the movement than you're actually getting when you're only shooting in 30 frames per second. So when you use Twixter on your clips it's like interpreting the data and the frames itself and filling in the gaps between the frames to create that smooth slow motion look. And you can also get a lot of control over the speed because you've slowed it down and create that extra frames when you slow it down it looks really smooth now i personally am an anime editor so when you're using twixter on anime it's a little bit of a different experience than using it on say like a tv show or like real life footage because when you are taking that real life footage there's a lot more frames to work with and there's a lot more like movement captured however in anime it's hand-drawn animation frame to frame most of the time and each frame can differ a lot especially in a lot of action fights or when there's a big jump the movements fast stuff like that so i do go through what clips work best as well as how you can spot them later in the video so stick around for that but without further ado we'll just get straight into it now when you're using twixter on any anime clips it's important to keep in mind that only some clips will work well with the plugin because of the way animation is made you know it's drawn frame by frame sometimes there can be big variations between each frame and when twixter tries to interpret that it doesn't interpret it right and it can result in a lot of warping so an example of a clip that would work well is on the screen now. However, this clip that's following it would not work well. So when you're looking at this first clip here that would work well, you can see as we're going through each frame, there isn't too much difference between each of them and the movement is pretty minimal. Whereas with this one, there's quite a lot of movement going on. You know, the hair is completely different here and there. So when we put Twixter onto it, it will warp. And I'll show you the difference between the two once we apply the settings. So how do I apply it? First you wanna do is isolate the clip that you'd like to put the Twixter on and pre-compose it. And then go up into effects and presets and type in Twixter, should come up down here. And you can either double click it or drag it to your clip, making sure that you've got the clip you want it on selected. Now we've got the effect controls window popped up over here. You want to uncheck this box if you have to. Sometimes you don't have to depending on what operating system you are using. And then you want to change the input frame rate to seven, image prep to contrast edge enhance and frame interpretation to motion weighted blend with smart blend turned on. And that'll give you something that looks like this. So you can see that looks super smooth and it makes it look really nice. So I've applied the same settings that I used before onto that second clip and I'll show you what that looks like now. So you can see there is a huge amount of warping. It just doesn't look good. <laughs> and that's just because of the huge difference between each frame because there's so much movement in it and it's quite a big jump. When Twixter is trying to interpret the frames between, it just doesn't, doesn't work well. Something that you can do if you have a clip that's doing this is you can change the frame rate and put it up to maybe something like 12 or 15. And you can see there's a little bit less warping. However, it's still happening. And honestly, sometimes it's just better to choose a different clip or you can strategically choose only part of the clip. So an example of this is the last part of the clip actually works pretty well. So you could just use that in your composition instead. Alrighty, so we've been through how to apply the settings. Now let's learn how to change the speed. First thing you wanna do is make sure you've got your Twixter applied to your clip and pop in those settings that I showed you before. And then we're gonna keyframe the speed, which you can see over here. 
at 100 and then go back down to our timeline, make sure our clip is selected and press the letter U on our keyboard, which will bring up your keyframes. And then I'm gonna drag this first keyframe to the speed of 100 out so it's sitting before the clip starts. Essentially what we're doing when we are keyframing the speed at 100 is just locking the clip in place to make sure we don't lose it while we're changing the speed. So I always do that before I start doing anything to the speed. So if you want to slow down your clip, what you can do is pop a keyframe at the beginning of your clip and then just type in how slow you want it to be. So if I want it to go at 20% and then if I play it, it'll be really slow. And now you've noticed that because we've already pre-composed, it's locked into the length that it's at. So we just wanna right click time, enable time remapping. And then we have the entire clip. So if we wanna speed it up, it's the same thing. Maybe we wanna do it at 150. So it's moving quite fast. Let's say you want it to go fast and then slow. We're gonna keyframe the beginning of the clip to 200. And then we're gonna keyframe about here to 20. And don't worry if when you're doing your keyframes that your screen goes black, it just means because you've sped up the clip, it's a lot shorter than it was normally. Once you've got your keyframes in place, highlight them and press F9 to easy ease them. So at the moment it looks like this which looks fine. However, go into your graph editor. So this is the value graph. When you're editing the graphs, honestly, it's just trial and error and seeing what works with your own specific clip. Each clip will have a different type of movement and depending on the edit that you're trying to make, you want the movement to be in a certain spot. However, the basics is if you want it to go fast and then slow, keyframe at a faster rate, maybe about 200 and then keyframe to 20 and then edit the graph and just keep watching it back until it looks the way that you want it to look. So if I wanted it to go fast, slow, and then I wanted it to go fast as she lifts her head up, I'm going to move this keyframe to about here. And then over here, I'm going to keyframe it to 200 again. And then I'm going to keyframe it to 20 again. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to edit the graph. So essentially when you're editing the graph, the thing to keep in mind is that these high points represent when the clip is moving faster and the low points represent where it's moving slower. And this is the path of your clip's speed. So at this point it's moving fast and then it immediately drops down to slow and then it moves fast for a second again. If you were to have more of a dip down the bottom here, that's gonna your clip is gonna be moving slower for longer. However, if we were to do something like this, it will move faster for longer as opposed to this. Honestly, as I said, it's something that get the basics down, understand how to keyframe your speed and then work through the graph to find out what works best for your edit. So you're also just using the keyframes to change the speed when you want it to. So if you were wanting to do an edit that's on beat, so let's say you want the, you've got a long clip and you want it to be like a velocity edit, I think is what they call it. You would mark out where your beats are on the audio and then put your keyframes where those beats are and you'd have the clip moving faster on the beats and slower in between. So I thought I would show you an example of what it looks like when you sync up the speed to the audio that you're using. Play it for you now. So what I did here, I brought up the waveform by pressing LL on my keyboard and my first step was to actually mark out where the beats were and underneath each of the beats I put a keyframe and then under each beat it was keyframed at 250 and between it's keyframed at 20 and the graph looks like this. And you can see that it's not exactly the same each time and that's because I wanted a specific look and I had to play with the graph to make it fit what I was going for. So essentially it's all about just playing around with your graphs and getting it so that it looks the way you want it to for your edit. And there's some really cool things that you can do with time remapping. I'll show you this one actually. If you've ever seen any one of my edits, you know that I am a big fan of Twixter and my main preference is to have the clip go from fast to slow. 
and I already showed you how to do that so yeah thank you so much for watching if you made it this far and I really hope it helped you in some way shape or form if you're interested in keeping up with the edits that I've been doing you can check out my socials as well as find out when I'm gonna upload next and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or concerns or anything you want to see me do next <laughs> Um, you also may notice that my audio is better and that's because I have a microphone when I do my tutorial, but I don't have one for my videos. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.